In the 2000s, Rockaware was one of the most popular and recognized urban fashion labels. It was able to make an impact not just in the United States, but across the globe. There was a time when we couldn't watch a rap video or movie and not see Rockaware on the screen. But the brand was rumored to have caused a rift between the co-founders and business partners Jay-Z and Damon Dash. This is the oral history of Rockaware. So I was like, maybe I could just start my own thing, start my own clothing line, make it the right fit, just baggy enough for, for everybody and the right style and just, and once that idea started, it was, it was off, man, it was off and running. In 1995, Jay-Z was a former rapper who was now a crack dealer. The lyrical river go right, if it until it dropped you, crazy seek spiritual hope from Jazz and Jay-Z. But he decided to give rapping another try. He was introduced to Damon Dash by producer Clark Kent. Damon was a Harlem entrepreneur who had contacts in the rap industry. Jay, Damon, and Kareem Biggs Burke launched Rockefeller Records that year to release Jay's debut album. The name is a pun on the name of American business magnate John D. Rockefeller. Jay's rise to superstardom started off slow, but after the death of the Notorious B.I.G., there was an increase in popularity for Jay because of his appearance on Big's posthumous Life After Death album, as well as the features Biggie did on Jay's songs. Jay crossed over to the mainstream when he started making catchier songs. His career skyrocketed, and in 1997, Rockefeller agreed to a 50-50 partnership and distribution deal with Def Jam Records. Within the first few years of the deal, Rockefeller signed artists like Noriega, M.O.P., Beanie Siegel, Emil, DJ Clue, as well as producer Irv Gotti, and started the film production company Rock Films, which made a distribution deal with Miramax. They produced the films State Property, Paid in Full, Paper Soldiers, and Death of a Dynasty. Next came the clothing label in 1999. By that time, Jay-Z was rap's biggest star and an influential rapper with a number of hit songs that made it onto blockbuster soundtracks. His album, Reasonable Doubt, sold more than half a million copies, and volume two, Hard Knock Life, had sold more than five million copies by that time. After recognizing his influence, Jay started reaching out to fashion brands mainly supported by rappers about investments or a possible collaboration. Him and Damon scored a meeting with the executives of the Italian luxury design house Iceberg, but no offer was ever made. Jay said, We went in there with a plan to have our own line with them. We were going to bring them into this culture, which was on the rise. But in the end, it didn't work out. We were naive and we were asking for way too much. End quote. So they decided to do it on their own. They went and bought sewing machines with the plan of releasing t-shirts with the Rock logo on them. But of course, they knew nothing about sewing or running a fashion brand. Russell Simmons, the co-founder of Def Jam and owner of Fat Fashions LLC, set them up with Russian investors Alex Bais and Norton Scheer, who had experience in apparel manufacturing. The Rockaware brand was launched in 1999 by Jay-Z and Damon Dash as a co-venture with the Comet Group, the clothing manufacturer founded in 1984 by Alex Vise and Norton Shear. And Rockaware quickly became one of the most visible lifestyle urban streetwear brands that catered to a wide range of customers. It actually became more visible than other popular hip hop brands like Fat Farm, Mecca, Echo Red, Sean John, and Nietzsche and Fubu. That started like I, I would I would make records and I would talk about like various like clothing brands, you know, on the record. And then I, I start noticing like like you know people would come to the shows wearing the clothes and things like that. And I know I was selling a lot of clothing for these companies. And I would I would go to them like we should work out a deal. I I, I think I'm a, I'm affecting your business a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you should work with me. You know, we could work together, do some ads and things like that. And and they was like turning me away. Like I don't think they understood the um the the amount of um clothing I was moving for them. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't doing it. I was just doing it to, to paint the picture. But at the same time it was 
economical for him. And, you know, they wasn't compensating me for it at all. So I was like, maybe I could just start my own thing, start my own clothing line, make it the right fit, just baggy enough for, for everybody and the right style and just, and once that idea started, it was, it was off, man, it was off and running. In a few years, they had expanded through licensing to sell affordable clothes for children and juniors, as well as accessories. Later down the line, Rockaware partnered with Barbie to release a collection of dolls. They were spending upwards to $2 million to advertise the brand and made some of the hottest rappers, models, and entertainers the face of the brand, like Kanye West, Zoe Saldana, Naomi Campbell, Joel Santana, and Victoria Beckham of Spice Girls. They put on fashion shows to showcase every collection and threw a lot of private parties that were attended by some of the most high profile celebrities of the 2000s. It feel real good a couple years ago when I would have looked at you, I wouldn't have never thought I would see Jay-Z, the head of a fashion line. Oh, sell clothing? Nope, not in this lifetime. Wasn't in my right mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, don't know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's okay. right. Yeah. All right, yo, so tell me about the party. I mean, it's a kind of a different, different atmosphere. I ain't used to fashion parties being like, just a little yeah. different. I mean, just, everything that we want to do, we always want to buck the system. Think outside the box, you know, we came into this business. We, we, we use unorthodox methods, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, to do what we do and to get to this point. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, why switch it now? While we're here, we're still trying to be creative and we're still trying to, uh, you know, just do different things. Okay. Instead of, you know, just stiff and walking down the runway. All right. Too uptight. We made it loose, just like the clothes are, just like the lifestyle is. I mean, you know I, I think it's working. I think it's working. Now, in terms of the clothes, I mean, are you actually involved in the designing of rock or, or are you just like, yeah. Yeah, we, we have great designers, you know, we have a great team right now, but in the beginning, uh, me and Dame, we was there, we was there in the, in the grind. Yeah. I mean, you know, we just... Y'all got jean I mean, suits again uh, for this line? Yeah, we got jean suits, we got sweaters, I mean, I mean, just the whole line is crazy. I mean, we stepping it up. Okay. In the beginning, our, our, our structure is correct now. Okay. I mean, when we first started... We was like chasing the, we was chasing the company yeah. because it grew so fast. You it know what did I'm pop. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, thanks, thanks to all you know the people out there, the people uh -huh. that support Rockefeller and the record, they uh -huh. grew faster than we can get a hold of it. So it's, it was really running away from us. You know what I'm saying? So now we got a hold of it. Our structure is correct. Uh -huh. Now we planning things and we plotting. You know, the clothes is just the reflection of the lifestyle. You know All right. What I'm so it's like, not. Is, is it just for the streets, or is it for like if I want to go to the polo game, or if I'm walking? Oh yeah, to the we got polo market, shirts for you to rugby joints, all that. Okay. Yeah. 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 If, I, if I want to go, if I want to go selling, uh, we ain't give you no slacks yet. We ain't no give you some slacks. We got some boat pants for you. We got some. You got some boat pants. Yeah, yeah. Y'all got the ladies line coming too, right? Yeah, the ladies line. We know. You know my favorite, my favorite joint is the powder blue velour joint. Oh yeah, the powder, powder blue, blue joint for the for the ladies. It looks nice. Yeah, it looks the powder nice. blue joint. Right. Great. But yeah, the ladies line is just coming out it's incredible. The jeans is right. You you know, girl, you gotta have your jeans fit right. Okay. All right. They were bringing in an estimated $350 million a year and ranked number two in retail sales in the urban wear market, just above P. Diddy's Sean John label, but right beneath Russell Simmons' Fat Farm label. Rockaware would eventually be launched at Macy's and other department stores. Then in December 2003, the brand went overseas to the UK, where it launched at Selfridges with the help of their spokesmodel Victoria Beckham. The department stores helped Rockaware reach over $700 million in annual retail sales. Damon had a more active role in the brand and made most of the decisions on the business side of things, while Jay remained the face and focused more on the music. In early 2004, the tabloid started running reports about tensions between him and Jay. The reports claimed that the two were clashing over the direction of their company. There were also allegations from one of the models that Damon had sexually assaulted her. According to the New York Post, Jay felt like Damon's antics and public persona were overshadowing the label's artists as well as their companies. But in an interview with the Washington Post, Damon insisted that the two were still friends, but still hinted that they grew apart. He said, it's kind of obvious by his demeanor that he's not as involved with us anymore. If he chooses to be an independent entity, that's fine. 
I choose to stay with The Rock, end quote. Two months later, in December 2004, Jay-Z, Damon Dash, and Kareem Burke sold their remaining 50% stake of Rockefeller Records to its parent label, Universal's Island Def Jam, for $10 million. As part of the deal, Jay would continue to run Rockefeller and become the president and CEO of Def Jam Records. The deal also allowed him and Damon to go their separate ways. But they were still bound together because of Rockaware. Months later, in 2005, Damon officially severed ties with his former partner and friend Jay-Z by selling back his stake in Rockaware for $22.5 million. But nonetheless, Rockaware was still doing pretty good and Jay took a more active role in Rockaware. They launched a collection with fashion designer Patricia Field and also had singer Sierra as their newest spokesmodel. He said, Rockaware has always been a part of the overall culture. It's connected to everything that I do. So coming in full time was important to me. It's something I really believe in and something I want to protect. Dane did a great job when he was here. I just feel that I have a different way of running things, which I think is working out well. I let people make mistakes and push them to be creative. I let a creative team design. When they feel good about something they have created, it makes them want to do more. It makes them want to do their best. People are happy here. I'm not a controlling manager, and I have a great team that makes me confident that things can run well when I'm on the road, and I'm proud of that." End quote. He launched a new men's line that was less streetwear and more casual with the intent to reach an older, broader audience, and it was sold exclusively in specialty retail stores. In 2007, he sold the clothing line to Iconics Group for $204 million. Iconics management company owned a lot of popular brands like Massimo, Mud Jeans, Joe Boxer, Echo, and Madonna's Material Girl collection, among others. In the deal, the CEO Neil Cole became Jay's business partner, and in turn, Jay agreed to help him with scouting new brands to acquire and operate under the Rockaware umbrella, while he continued to be chief creative officer of the Rockaware brand. In August 2011, Jay-Z confirmed via Twitter that Rockaware had partnered with Pharrell Williams' clothing label, Billionaire Boys Club. As we all know, streetwear wasn't as popular anymore as the 2010s rolled around, especially with the new age rappers promoting mainly high-end fashion labels. In 2012, sales dipped from $700 million to $500 million, and the decline continued over the years. Then in 2017, Iconics brand group filed a lawsuit against Jay-Z, Rock Nation, and Major League Baseball properties for allegedly violating the licensing rights agreement they made back in 2007 by infringing trademarks. Jay had released a collection of Rock Nation baseball caps with the MLB, which denied Iconics the opportunity to make profit. In the 2007 deal, Jay granted Iconics exclusive rights to manufacture and sell specific types of goods under the Rockaware name and other intellectual property rights. Later that year, Rock Nation countersued for breach of implied license, alleging that the 2007 deal with Iconics was reached for the Rockaware brand, not Rock Nation. The lawsuit was dismissed in 2019 after Jay bought back some of the Rockaware intellectual property assets for $15 million. Rockaware is still releasing new apparel today and is being sold exclusively through Dr. J's. Since then, Damon has made comments about the brand going down like the Titanic and getting corny after he sold his stake in the company. But he says his life has been really happy since severing ties with the company. However, it doesn't look like him and his former friend and business partner Jay-Z will be reconciling soon since Damon has made claims about Jay doing dirty business. Where are you and Jay-Z now when I, th I saw y'all building an empire that I thought was going to always be together? We have fundamental differences. Mm -hmm. I'm about making other people famous and rich and equal. That's what I wanted with Rockefeller. And he wanted to be the boss and have people work for him for 25 years straight, which is what happened. So, you know, I actually feel sorry for my fallen angels because I've taught people to share. I've taught people to be equal, not to work for. You know, I can't work. I can't have my friends working for me. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it. They got to be my equals. And that's what I believe in 100 percent. And everyone should be equal. When, when is the last mean? time you talk with Jay-Z? I don't want to talk about Jay-Z. No, Jay -Z. come on, oh, Dane. Why? 
Why? Because we're having you know, this, a full you know, conversation. You know why here. it's not fair? Because he doesn't talk about it. I hear and you. every time I mm. talk about the situation, number one, this is what you know. No matter what, I feel he robbed me. Period. Okay. He, and no matter what, I'm always gonna feel that way. So you're never gonna like if somebody if I hit somebody with some work and they run off, I forgive it. It don't bother me. But if you ask me about that person, I'm like, nah, he ran off. Right. So the way he goes about moves with my business. I'm not talking about nobody else's. But personally, the way he did me was dirty. The, the way he did Biggs was dirty. The way he did Rockefeller was dirty. So he went, told L.A. Reid, I want Rockefeller. I don't want Jay and Dame. I mean, Dame and Biggs down. And we was like, damn, out of left. And when I had the conversation, he said, yo, I want to look like a boss. I can't look like a boss around you. I thought that was dirty. The shit he did with, with Rockwear, that was dirty. When he said he wasn't going to be a part of it while I was selling it and devalued it. And then, you know, I stepped away from it because I needed to go do my own thing. Then all of a sudden they do a big deal like that. That was dirty. You know, they put me, I mean, that was dirty. It was dirty business. And that's how I feel. So anytime you ask me, I'm not salty for life. Right. But with him, yeah, I'm salty. That was whack. Uh -huh. and, and look, there's no more Rockefeller. It's just him. Where's Rockefeller? And in June 2021, TMZ reported that Rockefeller Records was suing him for attempting to auction off Jay-Z's 1996 album, Reasonable Doubt, as an NFT. Although Rockware isn't popular anymore, we can all admit that the brand was definitely an influential moment in black and hip hop culture. Did you guys own any Rockware back in the day? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.